it's like a really good drug and I don't know it just you reels you in and that's it If I had to describe roller derby, it's totally rugby for chicks on skates. Pretty much that would be without the ball. Obviously the jam of being the ball, but yeah, that's pretty much how I would explain it. It would be a woman's full contact sport and yeah, pretty much out there to kick butt between each other but still love one another. It's got the basis of every other spot. you got the rules, how to score points procedure, everything that you find in the normal spot. It's just got a little bit extra that gives it a bit of sunshine. I, I don't know what you would say. It is a team of women from all different areas that get together with one goal. And the goal is there's five people on a rink at a time, two teams. Four are blockers, one's a jammer. Your jammer is going to be scoring the points and her aim is to maneuver through the blockers. Every single time she passes the blockers, she's going to be scoring points. The bank track one was very different. You're always up at an angle, first of all, so that kind of makes it much more challenging to skate on that surface. It's much faster, it's much more rough, and it's much more showy. It's a bit like, uh, kind of like the WWF wrestling type thing where it's like, um, it's a sport, but it's also Put on, it's a show that's put on for the spectators. So for example, anytime somebody commits a foul, they'll have this pen penalty mistress who will spin the wheel. And uh, you know, if the wheel lands on pillow fight, the girls have to have a pillow fight. The flat track version is actually far more widespread and like people know it. Roller derby, I think attracts a certain kind of person. A like certain a kind of crazy. Tattooed kind of person. No, that's that's a horrible like, generalization. Okay, that's how maybe. Derby used to be. Yeah, yeah, you're right, you're right. Because now it's attracting more of an athletic yeah. style. But it's definitely someone with an like a alternative style. Mindset of, in mind some way, yeah. yeah. I think a lot of people have got the wrong idea about roller derby when they watch the movie Whip It and you saw elbows and fists and throwing each other around broken <laughs> noses. From a guy's perspective if uh, if you're just a, 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 a spectator, it's just a bunch of girls in really hot pants, nice tight pants, stockings. <laughs> For that, that's what a guy sees it as. Until they get there and they go, holy crap. Okay, we didn't realize there was actually a lot more to it, you know. The way that people think of roller derby is it's like a bunch of hardcore lesbians who just want to like kick each other's butts and stuff. But it's totally not like that. I mean, like you know, like you guys have interviewed, like the poppy mommy from like that side of the river and then you've got like the ones from up the hill the like you know the hill crest people and then you've got uh, some below chokes and like some glenwood chokes and whatever i don't think it's classified into like you know this like whole thing where derby is just for like hardcore chicks once you've actually personally been there and watched one of our uh, competitions um, one of our bouts, I do believe people change their whole perspective on what roller derby actually is. Uh, let me tell you something, you can say it's a, a female dominated sport and people will think about that. But you take a couple of guys, you put in with those girls, trust me, they, they are going to respect those ladies after that 100%. <laughs> it's not that it's a violent sport, it's just the concept of girls hitting each other it seems to be a whole nother world. I think it's a completely unique sport because there's nothing else out there. I mean, you've got the skateboarders and you've got the surfers and all of that type of thing, but it's just nothing else like it out there. I don't think, I mean, not even the rollerbladers have got, like, the amount of cool we've got. <laughs> and 
it's made me more comfortable with who I am. Um, it's made me more comfortable in my interaction with other people, especially women. Um, it's made me more comfortable with my body. Roller derby is a sport that you can play at any size. Um, it's not like at school where it's like if you can't run a hundred laps, you can't be part of the team. I have a derby wife from about three months ago. Yes, Deanne. She uh, got down on her knee at Amsterdam and I was like, what are you doing? There's no like specific thing of what a derby wife is. And you just have your people who you like, you call your wife and they look out for you and buy your presents. And you know, if you have issues with the derby or whatever, like you'll chat to them or um, they're just like a confidant to your friend. <laughs> So, sticky kit is one of those things that is part and parcel of derby. You can take your kit off and smell your arm and it still smells bad. Grab a cheap bottle of vodka, put it in a spray bottle, uh, one for me, <laughs> one for the kit. Because <laughs> you open it and it's like, wow, wow. <laughs> stink. But this is my new invention, it's so cool. Bag, smells too nice. I have a smelly in my bag. A new invention. You just hang it in there, close it up, and it's like, okay, next time I take it out of there, it's going to smell good. Derby in Durban was originally started by someone called Michelle Murray. She was a skater up in Joburg and C-Max and she moved down to Durban and decided that she had to start this in Durban. So her and another girl that also moved down from Joburg, Cara Munro, decided to start it. Initially there were like a handful of us skating at like the stadium with like two pairs of skates between us. Sometimes you'd wear the elbow pads or the knee pads. Helmets and gum guards were like so far from there. So dangerous. <laughs> so dangerous. <laughs> it actually makes me cringe when I think how we started. Um, and we just started getting, like we'd never skated, we'd never played about, we'd never had any kind of publicity, but it started growing. It's just this really awesome sport that kind of transcends boundaries. It's huge in South America, it's growing in Asia, everywhere in the world. So it's not really an American sport, it's just something that's really awesome and start, happened to start there. Mark that uh, works at the school, he's starting a kids league as well. They run to me when they come and practice. There is an excitement to want to do something. It's different. People don't want to do the old sport that everybody did for the last 20 years. They want to do something else and get out there and enjoy themselves. I can go around the corner on one foot only mm -hmm. and that's kind of cool because I'm the only one who can do that. I can do it too. Are you sure? Yes. <laughs> we have. Girls I've got faith. Tough. Yeah. Girls are tougher than boys. Yeah. <laughs> it's a group and it's about teamwork. We decided to throw a dim mitzvah. So it's kind of like you're coming of age for derby, passing their fresh meat level from which point they then enter a rookie level and they can start to join in on league practices yeah. and start to get to know the open girls before they choose their team. So it also helps to develop your concentration because you, you have to constantly be looking where things are. Um, whereas on the track you're not really worried about, you're more worried about people rather than service. Give it out, Ed, let's go! We always go to Circus Circus and there's a queue so we had all gone skating and a friend of mine was in the queue and this guy turned around and said these are those skaters you know it's such a like rough sport they, I don't know why they're trying to do it here in South Africa so there is that still, but you know what? It's exercise, it's fun. We're down there most Saturdays and Sundays. So you know what? Some people are going to say that. 
but it's all good. <laughs> we yeah. actually shot a wedding on Saturday, yeah. and two of um, my team, the Misfits, were actually skating in Joburg. So during the reception, like a downtime, we were like checking the scores and like yeah. getting updates from our and, like, like talking girls. about things that like certain things. That and had like happened. this guy sitting at our table was like, "Sorry, to interrupt, but what sport are you guys talking about?" Yeah. And we like started telling him, and he was like, oh, "Yeah, it's when like chicks like are in like lingerie and like hit each other." Yeah. And, like, so he's heard of that side of things, uh, like from kind the of. Movie. And then we started telling him all about it, and he got all interested, and like started showing them pictures. And I mean, that's, it's quite indicative of how Derby is responded to generally, is people are interested. They don't know what this is. Mm. They want to know what this funny animal is. Our girls are here skating around, doing a little bit of waitressing on wheels, beers on wheels, um, for tips to go towards Team ZA uh, to get us to the World of Derby World Cup. And I think people have been really, really accepting of it. What's more important than making the money is the number of people that have come up to our merch table and said, oh, hey, what's World of Derby? Tell me more about that. We've got a little video playing of a couple of the international bouts and a video from our bouts. Also just explaining people to the sport. And people have been really, really receptive so far and really, really welcoming. Now, even with derby names in South Africa, you start seeing a lot more South African -y names. So we had, like in Joburg, there's a girl called Club Cake, like KLLP, like giving someone a club. So in that kind of way, derby names are often taking on quite South African things. Like, the both are here. Well, I mean, like my name is based on motorboating. I was thinking of the tattoo that I had that I hadn't seen anybody else with. And I just went with Foxy. And then I thought, well, what ideas can I put with Foxy? Skating, going fast came up with flying fox and I thought what could be the most badass thing samurai is the best things ever kick ass Jackson is a strong ass kicky <laughs> roller derby player dot skater is he's a guy that doesn't give a beep when he's on the track and he does what he has to do, sends people out and he's like, basically like Darth, Darth Vader. And I tried to find something that was around, you know, was around Lee's. So it's Lee's just came as part of that and it fits the whole kind of, you know, hot shorts, fishnets kind of thing. Huge Anus! Huge Anus is actually quite a nice guy. He sounds like a huge anus, but he isn't. Mm. Mm. He's a huge anus when he coaches, but that's why he's such an effective coach. You actually have to find a balance at some point because, I mean, it was we're skating on Mondays, then I, it's fresh meat training on Tuesdays. Then Wednesday was a break, so that was a family day, dinner. Thursday, skating again, and then Friday, rest. Saturday or Sunday, skating. It does creep in. From once a week, it lands up, oh, I'm skating five times a week. I know a lot of girls have actually had problems. They've had friends like doing it, staging interventions because Derby's taking over their lives. Yeah. There've even been a couple of girls that since coming to Derby have actually broken up with their partners because they've realised that either that person's not supportive of what they want to do or it's given them the confidence to do that. It's pushed me to a level where I never thought I'd have the guts to do something like this because I was always, break a nail, not me. Break, a, break an ankle, not me. So I've never been one to, to take chances and take risks. Everybody walks around with their, their trolley bags and it's like they've left home and said, well that's it, I'm going to pack my bag and I'm leaving, I'm going to Derby. <laughs> But I think a lot of women are also drawn to it because it's kind of this environment where they have a lot of freedom that they don't always in their everyday lives. Because a lot of women, especially in South Africa, come from an environment where they are very subservient. They, they don't have the opportunities that their male counterparts necessarily have. And in Derby, you kind of have the freedom to be the boss, to do what you want, and to get out your day attention by hitting some of your friends. 
Emily decided to put her back into she put me on my head. <laughs> and um, <laughs> yeah, and it's very different because when other people hit you, don't take yeah, it personally. We know we're nothing. in the middle of a game, yeah. but I couldn't. I looked up. I couldn't believe my child had just knocked me to the ground. She crowd. turned around. Oh, in front of, that is said, nasty. No, she turned around in front of everyone and looked at me and said, "Emily, that was me." Yeah, that was me. Everybody's like, "How could you do that yeah. to your mother?" And like, when you have your gear on, especially you got the helmet and the gum guard, like you're ready to like take hits. I'm like under a meter and a half tall, so I'm like this petite little girl, and people think you know, oh she's such a pushover. With me, I'm actually not a pushover, and I think roller derby's like allowed me to express that part of myself. Each team's really kind of evolved its own brand and very significant identity. And that's happened pretty much in the last year and a half. Mm. If you look at, at the Eves, they're very um, outgoing party type people. They're always willing to get drunk and have a jaw, you know? And then, and then the Misfits are, are very... Um, uh, um. A bunch of dorks who love to read and... We just, I don't know, we get along really, really well. We always, I mean, there is always a theme song with us. I don't know, we'll be sitting there and somebody will say something and all of a sudden our team will like break out in song. Everybody dance now! You will be attracted to a certain team depending on the type of personality that you are. So we may seem, it was, seem extremely different, but we're, we're similar on a derby level. And I saw these girls on skates and skating around, I thought, hell no, there's no ways. I'm not going to get on skates and see my ice here in front of all these girls, I can't do it. I started going to Moses Mabita on my lunch times, just to learn on my own, so I couldn't make an ice of myself. So once I got the fundamentals, I went to, started going to the, the fresh meat package, where you know, you're just learning out and you're starting to go, and then I just went from there. Clint is just like a perfect poster child for it because he's definitely, he's definitely a man. And he's had to put up with a lot, you know, a lot of jeering and carrying on from his friends. And he's like, you guys just don't know what you're missing. Yeah, so you're gonna touch a few things. Just like get over it. <laughs> I mean, as chicks, I mean, come on now. We're like constantly touching in places that should not be touched. But like, it's gonna happen, unfortunately. In the pack situation, you are standing right next to a girl and you go like, oops, sorry about the boobage. But, but I mean, what are you supposed to do? I mean, the guys seriously need to get over it. I think that's got a lot to do with it. It's like the whole thing is like, oh my goodness, I'm gonna touch his wiener. My first bout was against some of the, pl the skaters from Team ZA. That's pretty <laughs> hardcore. They beat me up. Our last bout, one of our girls broke her leg. It's part of derby, I think. I mean, we've got collarbones that have been broken, arms that have been broken, ankles that have been twisted. I think it's just part of the game. I just fell really awkwardly and broke my collarbone. At first, I didn't realize quite how bad it was. I was like, it's cool, I'll skate back to the car. I stood up, I was like, it's broken. I think uh, society does have um, this appearance of what women should do and what we shouldn't do. We're just as tough and like out there as all the guys. Don't think that you are like superior. Well, superior is not quite the word, but you know, a little bit more like hectic than we are because they can like, you know, play rugby and I'm a man and I've got testosterone. People see it as, okay, girls in hot pants. So it becomes more of a sexual kind of a thing. Derby kind of being taken as a, almost as like a protest sport that women are appropriating the sport because it gives them the, this this freedom that they don't really have in their normal lives. So it it's, it kind of transcends just being a sport. We started with Jelly Wrestling as one of our um, fundraisers, and it's literally purely because we just had to get people there. <laughs> and you know how people are going to come if you have Jelly Wrestling. And since then, we've decided that it's like just not the way we want to go which is fun because it was fun for what it was, but then we decided like that's actually not what we want to be seen as. Trying to escape that idea of like the male gaze and it's therefore for male performance is something that, that 
is an important issue to me because it's not something that I feel like it should be. Um, but again, obviously it has its place. I mean, my team, when we were deciding on our uniforms, we decided to steer away from that kind of thing because we didn't want our focus to be on our sexuality. We wanted our focus to be on our athleticism. So we chose to go for regular, like three quarter length, like exercise pants, like a lot of the top leagues overseas do. What other sport that women play is huge women's volleyball why because they all run around in little panties and guys want to see girls running around in little panties so that is something that unfortunately is an unavoidable side of it but i don't know it's tough in like a sexist society like south africa for sure um people it's going to take a lot to change people's attitudes towards female sports and i think uh derby is a good way to do it you can still wear all the beautiful clothes and dolly up the hair and put on pretty makeup and look really sexy, but be really, really, really strong. Um, and I think that that really goes a long way to developing the persona of a woman. Whether you have a full face of makeup or no makeup at all shouldn't ever, you know, determine your sport or athletic ability. Not only do those people think that you're a good looking woman or that you're you're a sweet little thing, they see you on the track and they go, wow, that is an amazingly strong woman. Um, and I think that that also gives you power. Women in sport has always kind of been the eye candy on the side or like, you know, the sharks girls that flash the crowd. And we're trying to move away from that and go, you know what, it's cool that we're just as hard as you guys and we're just as strong as you guys. The more women embrace their aggressiveness, the better we are because then we, we project a stronger voice. We're not wilting violets, you know, sweet whatever. We're like, Argh. I think a lot of the people who are taking it seriously are sort of leaving that sort of side of it behind. They're dropping the names, dropping the dropping the hot pants, you know what I mean? <laughs> leaving those kinds of things behind and rather focusing on the athleticism of the whole thing. We do need to reach more um, diversity in our roller derby. But I do think if we had to find a venue in town, we'd get a much bigger pool because a lot of the time you meet people like down at the beachfronts and stuff and they're keen to join and they're keen to skate but they just can't get themselves up the hill. It all depends on what their friends look like. If their friends are all the same mould, then only the same mould will ever see or hear about it. Until we sort out a venue in Durban, I think it is still going to be middle class white people that have cars that can drive up. Currently it's more of like a city thing. The rural people won't necessarily have an area to skate, even if you had all the gear sponsored or, you know. So those are the kind of setbacks we have in this country. Roller derby can grow quite huge. It can, it can cross all cultures, black, white, Indian, you name it. It just needs time. Linda and Pippa, who are two of the girls that run C-Max and Joburg, contacted Adrienne and myself. And were like, hey, let's do something crazy. Let's send a team to the World Cup next year. And we were like, okay. Didn't expect. Yeah, we were like, oh, look, this isn't actually going to happen. There's no way in hell we're going to be able to do this. And then come this year, we're like, okay, well, let's actually try this. So we put together trials. We got a coach from each league. So Andrew was our Durban coach. And we decided to have our first round of trials. So we had trials in Durban, Cape Town and Joburg. And then we also had... Um, players from overseas sending in video footage of their of their playing and from that a, a big squad was chosen and training was done for over a four-month period until the final round of trials which were held in Joburg in June. Now somehow we're going to get them to Texas with all our little fundraising endeavors but somehow we're going to get there. We're going to go and show the world what we've got because up until a little while ago people didn't even know there was derby in Africa. No one knows what to expect from us. We don't know what to expect from us either, really, but it's, it's going to be an absolutely incredible experience. Do I put the camera? <laughs>